I don't want that for my grandbabies and I want that for my neighbors. Paul Breyers moved from California 14 years ago, he says, to get away from a meth problem. But it seems he hasn't moved far enough. I got two grandbabies in the house and I got a meth lab in our dumpster, not even a half a block away. He was stopped Friday night trying to take out his trash and was told there were substances consistent with the meth lab found in a dumpster behind his house. They said that there were some chemicals in there. Those chemicals are still under investigation, but suspect David Taylor reportedly admitted to police he had purchased pseudoephedrine for the purpose of making meth and said he kept other items like fuel, fertilizer, salt, and plastic tubing in his home for the same reason. Everything you can imagine can come out of a meth lab. Edward says there's currently not an airborne threat, but says the danger comes if the chemicals were to mix together. A lot of this stuff is everyday household stuff, but here's the problem is when you start mixing these chemicals together, they give off extremely deadly gas, explosive potential fire hazards. Cascade County Sheriff's deputies, police officers, and the Central Montana Drug Task Force have been working the case since late Friday night and they still have a long way to go before the area can be completely cleared. We will probably be here until minimum midnight tonight. Sheriff Edwards says a mess like this could cost from $2,000 all the way to $10,000 to clean up. Luckily, the Drug Enforcement Administration is taking on that cost. In Black Eagle, Kay Rossi for Montana's news station. The big swell in the senior population is expected to happen by the year 2025. At that time, an estimated one in four Montanans will be over the age of 65. However, the increases are already starting and they're having a big impact on the health care industry. There you go. A pelvic injury two months ago forced 91-year-old Kitty Brond off her feet. I fell down like one out of three adults do every year. <laughs> Thanks to help from several health care workers at Missouri River Care and Rehabilitation, she's now able to stand again. It was so wonderful to be able to stand up again. State statistics show that Kitty is just one of more than 200,000 seniors, all of whom could need health care services. And that number continues to grow. In Montana, 35 people are turning 65 years old every day. Many factors are contributing to the larger population group, including advances in medical technology. We have better treatments for cancer. We have better treatments for diabetes. Missouri River Care has expanded its facility to meet the growing need. In the last three years, the rehab center alone has gone from 22 beds to 62 private rooms. The demand of it is so much greater. It, skilled nursing homes just aren't for end-of-life population any longer. With the increased need for health care services comes a need for more health care workers, which was good news for both Marnie Reisenauer and Jessica Hendricks, who recently entered the job market. I've gotten several recruiter, recruiter calls um, about positions available across the United States. I get calls probably at least once or twice a day with people calling me saying, hey, I've got travel positions all over the country. Rung says right now the state isn't having a hard time recruiting health care workers, but that could change as the rest of the country's aging population also continues to rise. In the future, it could be that we have to be more competitive with the larger areas, and that's, that's always going to be a challenge. For Kitty, adequate health care services were crucial to her recovery. We are very, very lucky to have this therapy. I'll continue this series next week with a look at how the state's increasing senior population could affect housing. On special assignment, Kay Rossi for Montana's news station.